Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, should we go over where where this track started? So I I found some some really really popular Taylor Swift song, and then I like just took out. <laughs> I just took it into Ableton and I just messed with it for like a few hours and then just came up with some weird vocal chops and I'm not gonna say which Taylor Swift song but but yeah I don't know it was just really really spontaneous hmm. and then and then and I that was the that sort of that's this thing yeah thing that the vocal chop thing. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to tell. Yeah, no. No, I made sure no one could tell. <laughs> someone's going to someone's going to take that to heart and, and and figure it out. Yeah. Fuck it. So you made that sort of drop first. And yeah. And then I sent the intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made the drop first and then the little intro thing just to like bring it in. And then I sent the whole thingy to Sydney. Nice. Yeah. Do you want to play her vocal cuz you, you did a lot to that. Yeah. Um it was so long ago, I don't remember what she actually sent me and then what I did, like, in terms of harmonies and stuff like that. I think she sent me the vocal with some harmonies, and then I, I also added, I might have added some, I don't know if I did. I usually do, though. But here's the vocal. So much weird side-chaining thingies going on. Like, I bring out some high end, let me turn all that off. It does sound different. Like it doesn't sound that the did same. You add, did you add a chorus or something? Um. Well, I actually did this weird thing. So she sent me vocal takes. Like um, she sent me vocal takes that I did something with another in another project. Uh -huh. I think vocals new. Like see how I, I comp them on whatever. Uh -huh. And then um, and then I have her vocal that like she actually sent me and she processed it herself and stuff like that. And, and I didn't think I was gonna use it, but it had this weird like this some of the stuff she used gave it this weird. Things so huh. I kind of just mix them both together, yeah. That's cool. Let's hear, let's hear what she sent. <clears throat> so this is what she sent. Um, I added the reverse. I don't. I think I added the reverse. Yeah. So that sounds like there's a f uh, a code. So there's on reverb on there. there. There's like so many things on there. There's so many weird things. So again, here's the vocal that that with some processing on it that I got sent, and then. And then I balanced it with this one. Put the shackles on me. Fantasy. I wanna feel small in the so it's kind of like a bunch wow. of Sydneys at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Sydney, 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 Sydney. Yeah, so many Sydneys. <laughs> you have the, what, the, the clean up front and center one. To yeah. Layer. Just to kind of give of it, it exactly, and then when you and then it comes out in mono a lot, a lot yeah, more clear, right? Yeah, it sounds like a whole choir because of that. Yeah, yeah, it's sick. Yeah. Carl Fandango is asking, can you show, can you show how you use the OTT on those vocals? Um, is that on the? That's on this one. The front, yeah, the front and center one. Front one. Put the shackles on me, cold fantasy. I wanna feel. It just kind of breaks up the subtle. high. It yeah, it's very subtle. Like, it's, what am I doing? Forty-six percent. I mean, that's not really subtle, but it's not too much. Like. And yeah. I, I, like it, it just kind of rings out the high end a little bit. I, I don't know, does yeah. some things. <laughs> yeah, putting OTT on vocals is dangerous, isn't it? Because it's like, if you just put it on 100%, you completely lose. Oh, you're done. Yeah, yeah. you can't do that. No, no, no. You lose all um, clarity. Yeah, no, I, I never put it 100%, but I, I do use vocals. Someone, some, like one of my friends who like produces really vocals for like some cool people, like uses it. So mm -hmm. I, I just kind of like. Yeah, I, I that's where I got the idea from. I because I was I always thought it was like something I was like, oh, you shouldn't put OTT on vocals. That's gonna like ruin the vocal. But then I saw that guy doing it, so I was like, shit, I'll do it. And yeah, I can go through the intro. So like, um, the actual intro of the song that's like in the release version is the as the outro of this reversed. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I always like I always reverse my tracks, and then I get like weird ideas for things from them. So yeah. I was just, like, yeah, I'm sure you can do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's cool. Maybe maybe we can listen to it reverse later, but um, um yeah. So here's the outro. Yeah. Um, Is that Foley? Yeah. I rec oh yeah. I recorded this in the winter. Yeah. What what, what did you record? Oh, oh, it's funny you ask. Um, I recorded a 
um, basically in Canada in the winter, like anyone who's like lives near me will know this, but they have like, there's these like, I don't know if it's called an ice storm, but I call it an ice storm. It's like when it gets so cold that the trees, um, or I don't know if it's because it rains and then the next day it's freezing, but the trees basically and all the plants and basically everything has this like thick layer of ice around it. And like to the point where sometimes like this one year, like trees were falling because they were just became frozen. Like they fall into the, fall into cars and shit. So and, is and that a recording of like ice just falling off of? No, it's the recording of ice, like the trees when they start to thaw, the ice on all, all of them starts to crackle, and it sounds like that. Let's hear it solo it again. Um yeah. And you record this with your Tascam or? And it sounds like rain. It's really weird. It sounds like yeah. rain. Uh, this was with my Zoom H1, but I had lost it. Yeah, you can hear. All I think there's sound. water. You know, so so because it's thawing, you get some weird crispy kind of thing, but then you yeah. also get the droplets, which is the water I think in the background. Yeah. Dropping, so it's like this weird textured thing. Yeah. So, yeah, Foley is a big part of your sound, right? <laughs> yeah. So like, <laughs> like, he he lost his, your Zoom H1, right? Yeah, I and lost it. And since you've been using your phone, I've um, been using my phone. People don't get how big a deal. Yeah. It is that you lost. I use my phone like every day. I'm just recording things. It's it's fun. So this is one of my favorite sounds in the whole track. Is this? Yeah. What is that? Prickly thing. I don't know what it what it is originally, but it's like this weird Foley thing that I have. And it like pans around through the whole track. Did you record that or? I think I recorded it, but I also stretched it and did some other oh things yeah. to it. Yeah, but um. It's yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I resampled it much. But I mean, I maybe I did. I don't know. Right, it's something, but yeah, it actually goes on through the whole drop. Like, it almost almost in place of the like in place of like hi hats. Like. Yeah. It fills, yeah, it fills that space. What's up? It fills that space yeah. in the mix. Yeah, there's no hats. I think I tried to add hats, but it wouldn't fit with that. And I was like, Hat. yeah, just do it. But let's yeah, hear it, let's hear it without that. Oh yeah, it sounds like completely different. I mean, it it could work. Yeah, but like, I mean, but it, I'd have it to make it different. Yeah, yeah, but this thing is really cool. Like, I thought it was, I thought it was just interesting to have. It like, adds interest and randomness. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the rest of the outro. So. What's that ending yeah, thing? Yeah, is that, like... The guitar kind yeah. of thingy? Um, I'm trying to find it. Oh yeah, it's this. I think it's... Is it my synth? No, oh, is it your Moog? It's my Moog. Okay. But, um, I, um... So yeah, what, did gear, something what gear do you have in your studio? So, um, I have a, a, Mo a Moog Grandmother. It's like this... Um, semi-modular synth, and then I have a couple of modules, like um, some envelopes and like one oscillator, and then I have one clouds granular module thing, okay. but I haven't figured out how to use that for something in a track yet. <laughs> yeah. So this is the Moog. Yeah, this is the Moog, yeah. Let's play the chords thing. How do I multiple solo on the windows? Like you fucking around on the Moog and then chopping and editing it? Or no. is it you playing in the MIDI? Um, oh, yeah, I, I, I can, I triggered the MIDI through Ableton, so I, I, I did that, and then I, um, I didn't really fuck around much, like, I just kind of had, I kind of knew what I wanted. Just, like, some saw thing to fill out the thing. I think I have, a like, a digital synth as well, layered with it somewhere, I have to find. Or I might, I might you know. No, that's it, yeah, just that. Oh, I think that's actually uh, that's actually multiple layers in one stem. Oh, okay. I actually, I couldn't because my computer couldn't handle that. I, I think it's like silent and the synth and maybe one other thing. Yeah. So it's actually a few things. I just remembered that now. So this is like the state of my project after like <laughs> after like balancing things to audio like a million times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then just a, another layer for sub. Um. Oh yeah. The sub is going like up and down. I don't know if people who don't have yeah. sub. Sorry, people, you can't hear this. On laptop speakers maybe I can, stuff. maybe I can saturate it a bit before those. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just a, a sine wave, no saturation. No, no, I think there is saturation on this. This, there's, there's a bit. It sounds like there is. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. Okay. But I, it's weird. I added saturation, but then saturation, I saturation then. And then I eq it. The rest of the I don't usually have that much distortion on my sub. I don't know why I didn't in this scenario, but I guess it's because they're. Yeah, it's because maybe the other bass layer. It's like, kind of like. Yeah. It's not as like in your face, so it needed. The extra weight. The thing I noticed most about this track is it's fucking loud. <laughs> yeah. Like really, the drums are really hard hitting. I thought it, I was having trouble getting it loud. I was kind of sad. I thought I couldn't yeah, get it that loud. Really loud. I guess it's I just have. Loud. Okay, sick. <laughs> so, uh, let's let's hear the drums because I feel like the drums are a big part of. It. Drums. See, I'm just um. How let's see. There's melodyne on them apparently. I don't know. Melodyne why. on the drums. Say <laughs> so you put on melodyne there. 
I guess there's nothing. <laughs> Just to, oh, you know, it's probably. Oh no, yeah, there's nothing. <laughs> there's literally nothing there. I thought it was gonna be for the hi hat or something, but no, there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Top tip, just throw in plugins and then turn them on when nothing's playing. <laughs> yeah, especially just when you're trying to save CPU, just yeah. throw plugins, extra <laughs> plugins, so you can't so you can't finish your song. Wait, can we go back to that drum layer for a second? Oh, yeah, how sorry. Are you, are you layering your kicks and snares? Um, and I think I might have. Yeah. Honestly, this, the drums in this song, like, I was having a lot of trouble getting them the way I wanted to, but, I could, like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it does a job. It's a punchy kick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do I have here? Great this sampling the Justin Bieber fucking kick <laughs> yeah just a lot of things I don't know why I did them but I did them mm -hmm. no, I'm kidding there's this which is something. that sounds like the more stereo room mic kind of yeah so what I did here is I just blasted the saturator and just put it on 5% just so you get a little bit of the full saturated sound yeah. layered with the thing, yeah. Wh wh what does it sound like without the saturated? Oh, it's completely different. Yeah. It sort of has an OTT effect almost. In a weird yeah, way. but like in a different kind of Squashes different vibe, yeah. Yeah. Different different flavor OTT, uh -huh. but not so really it's though. Like compressing it. And well, yeah, it's just saturating it, distorting the shit out of it, yeah. and then just like yeah, it's really cool with synths. Um, so there's an EQ here that's not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, <an EQ> that's <laughs> <laughs> so the reason for that, hopefully I didn't deafen anyone with my loud laugh. Yeah, so the reason for the EQ is, um, there's no reason for it. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Renaissance. Oh, that's a waves compressor that, that you don't have. Oh, yeah. It's not, it, it's all right. It's pretty good, I guess. And that's, um... It's just, I don't even know. It's just doing, you know what I mean? Like, you're just kind of, like, when you're when I'm making the kick, like, I'm just kind of, like, throwing things in there, just kind of, like, making it quieter, making it louder. Like, right now, I couldn't tell you why I did certain things, but at the yeah. time, like, there was a reason for it. Like, maybe something wasn't punching right on a certain device that I was testing on, or, yeah. I don't know, something, yeah. But actually adding a EQ without doing it, a Ableton EQ without doing anything does something. What does it do? It, like, because if you put it on a track that's not clipping and you put an Ableton EQ on it, it'll start clipping. Oh, true. And then that clap. The snare thing, clap yeah, thing? Snare clap. Yeah, let's check it out. Sounds like a duck. Bat. <laughs> so for every drum, it's, it's like you have the direct hit, and then you have like something like a room, like more spatial thing that's like more high pass in this case yeah i guess like kind of it kind of it seems like that like for the snare i mean it's snare at the end of the day you have to have some kind of i mean you don't have to but like for these for this one i want it to be like a kind of like a kind of snare so i wanted to have some kind of like noise thingy but the kick like i don't know i didn't i don't i didn't i don't remember like going through that thought process but i guess that's what it, that that is what it seems to be yeah mm -hmm. Like yeah, it's like you do it intuitively. It seems like a short kind of reverb slop thing that in, yeah. the, in the kick that I have with the saturated thing. Yeah, because when I go to make drums, I do that intentionally. I like, I yeah, yeah. have the, the, Maybe. Mi the mono like yeah. hit. I guess everyone just is going for the same thing, but just has their own. Yeah. Yaron Stone asks, do you guys like using stock Ableton EQ? I always feel like I'm lazy when I don't use fab filter. It depends on what, it, what I'm working with. Like, if it's something really important, like a vocal, I will not use the Ableton EQ, but if it's just to, like, high-pass something, like a... Bass. A, an effect, or, like, or... I mean, even bass, I'd still use Pro-Q most of the time, depending. But, yeah, it just depends. Something that's not important, I'll use Ableton EQ. If I think people are going to hear the difference, then I won't. Then I, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, for, for like, low-end stuff. But for high-end stuff and like shelving, yeah. Suarez, yes. How do you guys feel about industrial snares, like TF2 frying pan snares, <laughs> <laughs> like Sophie snares? I'm guessing. I like them. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan. All right, um, we got this frying pan right here. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's just like pretty, kind of dubstepy snare, I guess, mm -hmm. just because it has that. So this is giving it most of the mm -hmm. juice. And I got a bunch of um, this clap thing. Yeah. So with them together, I, I'm gonna solo like two layers together so you can kind of hear how they, how it builds. So that, so there's no transient right now. It's just kind of the, the clap and the reverb thing. It sounds almost like it's glitching. I don't really like that. I think something didn't load properly because I don't think it sounds like that. So here's the transient layer. Some big kind of thing. It sounds like it came from the kick almost. 
super and heavy. Have you got stuff uh, sent to a return truck for reverb? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Doesn't doesn't look like it. Actually, it's actually, it's, yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice that. We'll take a look at that. The, um, like somebody you, on the <laughs> group chat. So you know more about my song than I do. <laughs> Notice. Um, but yeah, so these so these are three layers, and that and this basically sounds like the finished snare. I don't know what else I have going on here, but this sounds like the finished snare. But just this, this, to give it the punch, and then this, it's for some more clap effect. So all nice. together, it's like, bing, bing, bong, ding. And you have all both those drums sent to a reverb. Sent to a reverb. Yep. Let's go so over to that. Just like yeah, a little bit. Sounds like there's a lot. Of there's an EQ on there. Okay. That's not that's not loaded. Probably yeah. taking out all, a lot of things. Yeah. And then there's this. This one. This EQ is probably doing something similar to this. I'd assume. That's because that's what I would want to do right now. <laughs> if I could EQ it. Maybe I'll turn this off. Yeah. So that EQ was like rolling off the. It was rolling off the low end. Like I I didn't want any of the obviously of the bass or of the. Right. Like you know what I mean the beef of the snare. Mm -hmm. I don't want any of that in the reverb because then it's going to be too much and it's going to kind of clash with it and then I probably take out the high end as well yeah so it's like yeah giving it some space adding a room yeah I guess here I doubled up on it with the Ableton EQ doing kind of the same thing just to kind of even there's probably a space where it got a bit messy so just to close it down more I guess I did that yeah and I probably added the reverb because this section was felt a bit empty maybe or something I don't yeah. know yeah yeah there's enough space to fill to add big reverb Cause it's just like there's like the, just three layers. There's like the vocal thing. But yeah, let's hear some of the synths. So like there's this synth, and there's this. So this is the vocal like with some thing on it. Yeah, what's on that? I don't know. It's been resampled, I guess. Lots of shit. Oh. I'm like stretching it too, I think. Yeah, so like I stretched this. Well, that's the vocal. Yeah, this is just like some stretch. Yeah, this is just a vocal resample. I think pitched up probably too. There's like a whole group here that's yeah, called that reverses. The drop. <laughs> oh that? yeah, that's my vocal. That's a vocal? That's yeah, that's me. <laughs> I called it a she she. Where is it? <laughs> Try that again? What's up? Try that again? <laughs> no, solo it? What's up? Solo it? <laughs> How the hell is that a vocal? That's crazy. <laughs> That's my vocal. <laughs> Would you? Do you remember what you did to it? Um, probably just form and shifted it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. On um, a vocoder. Oh uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Noise setting. Or oh no, I don't know. Modulator. There's probably a, like I probably did a million things to this. That's probably why I flattened it because yeah, yeah. I couldn't handle it. Uh huh. Yeah. I could have sworn that this was a that was a synth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So many of the elements that I think are synths in your track are actually like bits of audio fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna be doing that more often, like less synths and more audio that are actually the synths. Uh huh. Just because it's just things I record. It's just I don't know. It comes ready made with natural like. Natural. Perfections. That's like just the most, the most infinite level of detail. Right. Most like to like a, a molecular level, right? Right. Yeah. So should I like effects and like effects. Yeah. Sh I mean, I I went through those, but um, I can just see um. What's that? What's this ice storm? More foley. More foley. Yeah. Some chimes. You sampled those? No, or? this is from uh, Gladiator. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> right? You, you assumed I sampled that, yeah. Right. River, I did sample. Yeah. Surf River. Um, the river outside your house? Yeah. Yes, you should tell tell them where you live and... Oh, <laughs> tell them where I live? Well, <laughs> yeah, give them your address. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, um, my social insurance number is 519. <laughs> um, but yeah, you live in outside Toronto, right? Yeah, like 30 minutes outside Toronto. Mississauga. And you've got a river. You live in like the woods pretty much, right? <laughs> yeah, like um, all the streets around me are river streets. Like my street is Riverside. Uh -huh. street, a street down the road is River Grove. <laughs> <laughs> so we have these reverses. What's the, what's the reverse? Let's see. Yeah, I like the reverse. Just like, just basically take the... I actually, I learned this in like some YouTube video like a long, long time ago. 
where you just bounce the thing with a little bit of reverb on the end of the sound, yeah. or on the beginning of the sound, and then, yeah. you know what I mean, just reverse I'm sure you've done it, it quadrillion times, yeah. Yeah. So I have like a section for the reverses. Nice. Yeah, like uh, for when I'm mixing, because there's so many of them, I just do it for like half the things, I love it. That's a good and idea. Then, and you can just resample them and do really creative, like cool things. Yeah, yeah. I remember Nero used to do that for the vocals, like they'll have like really cool reverses and like do crazy things with them. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, such a classic technique. Yeah, yeah. I don't do it enough. I do it sometimes when I'm re when I really care. True. But <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm just like always so OCD and like, a in the sense that I'm like, are people gonna actually understand, like what the next section is if I don't do that? Like, are they is it or is it gonna come in too awkward? I'm just super anxious, like no, really scared about that. It's good. Like the way you do it is doesn't sound like a standard just reverb. In you know, no, yeah, I it's process like the you shit out of it. Process the fuck out of it. Yeah. Steven Diaz is asking, what is your favorite part or sound? Of this song and how was it made? I guess um, I went through that, but wh um, which one's your favorite? A couple. I mean, like I'd have to say two sounds are my favorite. Probably, um, I don't know if the sound itself is my favorite, but I just like the way I place it. Is this prickly sound? Yeah. And there are parts where it sounds a bit different, like in the end, um, it has a different texture here. Oops, come back. <laughs> yeah. It's just like a living thing. Like it's yeah, just yeah. Like it just sounds, it's, it's, yeah, it sounds like it's what alive. It was. I thought it was like uh, and I was, that always tripped me out. Insect like, wings fluttering or something. That's why That's why I got the guy to do the video of the butterflies flying right, right. at the beginning, right? That, that was literally, that's literally uh, sick. I'm glad you caught on to that. Or like, I'm glad like so someone noticed yeah, that. Yeah. It's cool, yeah. Do either of you feel pupy comparing your music with others? <laughs> if so, how do you cope? Yeah, I do. Um, I do all the time. I'm yeah, sure. I mean, we, 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 I mean, I feel like, I feel like most artists that I know feel, feel self-conscious about what they make. If they don't, they're lying. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you don't, then you're not going to progress. Because if you think yeah. you're, you're that good, then like you're exactly. not going to advance. You yeah. You think that there's yeah. something wrong with what you're doing. You're right. Yeah. Everyone's self-conscious. Yeah. People, humans are just self-conscious. <laughs> so Matt's about to play. It. Um, so this one is called Boreal Twilight, an intermission. Yeah. so good <laughs> there's so much s stuff going on it's so hard to like pinpoint <laughs> like everything is so n nicely resampled and nothing is just straight like how it, how it was you know nothing just sounds like how it comes out of a synth or you know <laughs> So, uh... Someone asked. 
Mm-hmm. How do the little details affect what we hear, even if we can't pinpoint them? Pinpoint them. Do you want to answer that? Yeah, I think randomness, even if we can't consciously hear it, it sort of triggers our brains to believe something is real. When we hear something that isn't completely repetitive or um, anything with nuance just instantly makes our ears interested because we believe it's something real. When we hear a repeating cycle waveform, we are less interested in it because it's just a repeating thing that wouldn't happen in nature, you know? Well, actually, what was... You y- question? Yeah. Matt, do you like death grips? Death grips? Do you know death grips? What's that? You don't know that? No. Death grips? Well, I'll, I'll show you that later. All right. Mastering on the Flamagra album. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you... I think he means the Philo album. I don't know what that is. Flying Lotus? Oh. I don't listen to Flying Lotus. It's so weird that Kresh doesn't listen to Flying Lotus <laughs> because it's like... Like, texturally, I feel like you you're, you guys are like pretty it, similar. Yeah. Maybe we'll Especially like the old, <laughs> like Los Angeles and Cosmogramma albums True. are very like how should I put this, uh, dusty. True. <laughs> it's like really texture, texturally oh, rich. I like that. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about the track and like how it started and? Oh yeah, sure. I remember one day I went out and just recorded a bunch of wa- uh, like weird samples, and then mm-hmm. I I don't know if I w- if I sat down and tried to make something out of those samples or if, oh yeah I was actually I actually I think I started the chords in L A when I was here for one of the Mazu shows oh, nice. and and then I um and I and I think I I showed it to everyone like Bryce heard it and like a lot of people heard it and and like and then I took it back home and then it was winter time back home in Canada and then I just kind of like recorded water droplets went outside recorded some plants recorded like weird things and the song is like but all the songs I've been working on them for like two years so like. Throughout the process, I would just record samples. Like I, some of the samples are like water droplets that I recorded in the summer. Some are like from different things. Yeah, I just put it together. I'm just, I was just kind of trying to make some cool like song that kind of makes you feel like you're in in like the winter, kind of like with all the crunchy kind of icy kind of breaking kind of sounds, or like the trees and an icy forest kind of. Yeah, yeah. With like weird like yeah. Imagine like you're in like a forest in like Avatar in the winter. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is very otherworldly. How do you see your old music? Sometimes artists don't like it as much as fans might. I still think Running From Death is one of the most mental tracks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I like some of my older songs, but, but um, yeah, I like my older songs. Yeah, I do. I like some of them. But some of them, I'm obviously like, you know, I could have done better here and there. Yeah. Yeah. I do don't you really still like Talk To Me? Um, <laughs> or do you um yeah, I do. I, I do like, I, uh, I like it sometimes. Like, I don't know. It depends on... Yeah, it's a, it's a great track. I was just saying, because, like... The thing is, like, I've, I've listened to it, like, imagine... How many times any of us listen to a track from right. the time we start making it, and not even like just the amount of times you sit down to work on it, but in the time you work on it, how many times are you looping one section right. to exactly. just like you know what I mean with just the drums, then with all the basses, then with all those synths, and then yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, you eventually get sick of it, and especially if it becomes the track that you're like most known for, and then <laughs> you have to hear it again and again even after you finish making it. Yeah, yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Matt, can you elaborate on that castrated song you made a while ago? It's like this metal halftime <laughs> with uh, Kenta Koei from Crossfaith screaming on it True. and singing. Yeah, we, we did that. I was in, uh, yeah, I was here for that. Uh, we went to a studio, I forgot which one, in LA and just tracked some vocals over this beat. That beat I've had lying around for a while, for like a year. Yeah. We just tracked some vocals and took it back, and he... I think the rest of the band didn't like it. (laughs) Band? Yeah. Oh, the Crossfaith. Yeah, Crossfaith (laughs) didn't... I'm not sure if they liked the rest of it, but anyway, they turned... They they didn't want me to put it out. (laughs) True. So I didn't. But I uploaded it to my SoundCloud, and they told me to take take that down. (laughs) (laughs) But, yeah, it was a cool track. Um... I think the verses were a bit rushed. Like I, I wrote the entire track. Like I wrote the lyrics, the melody, and just gave it to Kenta to sing and do. And I don't think I should have done that. I should have just gave him the instrumental and let him do his own thing with it. In hindsight, Matt, I read this tweet you wrote last year. I once said, if I start making tracks again, you should worry about my mental stability. Well, start worrying now. What's the story behind this? I always said that. Um, 
trance attracts a lot of mentally unstable people because it's such a euphoric, like, it's almost like a drug trance because, I mean, it's in the name, you know, it's like a euphoric release of emotion and it tends to <laughs> attract people that are generally a little bit more emotional because of that. Um, Matt, what's your vision for Mad Zoo? Do you look to any other labels for inspiration or are you just doing what comes naturally? Yeah, I look to what Stones Throw were or still are doing in terms of like taking, starting with one genre and then expanding from that. Um, actually, we didn't even start with one genre, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, as, as a model, we always look up to Stones Throw as like the model of artistic standard but also, you know, being a successful label and having hits and, you know, we don't want to limit ourselves, but we also don't want to, like, grow beyond our breaches, if that makes sense. Yeah, we want to just stay good, <laughs> I think. That's the most important thing. Stay old and pony boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of people are attracted to house music? <laughs> uh, you know people that like to party. Do you want to play uh, D Yeah, D let's play the room. Okay, so yeah, here's another track off, off yeah. the EP. And this is the next track.
<laughs> so fucking good. <laughs> like, I've got so many questions. Um, this little, this, the chord thing at the end gets, like, these little, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like harmony chord, like. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you spend on that? Like all the tracks have just kind of been in works for like on and off for like two years. Two years, yeah. jeez. Like yeah. on and off though, on and off. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not that that slow. <laughs> yeah. Not not two years straight, like every day working on it. But like you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you kind of work on a track, you get stuck, you just go move on, work on yeah. something else. It goes in the back burner. Yeah, do go. some sound design. Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? But um, there's so many great fucking sounds. <laughs> It just sounds like a lot of experiment, <laughs> a lot of crazy experiments went on. <laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, it's just like a fat. It started out as a, yeah, as a remix for like a random song, but then I just changed it, turned it into an original and replaced all the parts with, that I used with like my own stuff and yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that's how like a lot of that's people how I find like songs, it's, it's so easy to make songs when you have something to start with. Yeah. Because then you have that kind of thing that you're looking for, that, that motif. Yeah. Kind of there so nice yeah 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 it's cool to start with a theme yeah sometimes that can be a r remix that you just don't want to do anymore <laughs> yeah for sure man <laughs> like these scratchy sounds <laughs> do you remember what that was i don't remember what that was it's crazy i swear to you, i don't remember <laughs> The snare is just so fucking fat. <laughs> what did do you did you use a sample for for the for the snares? snares? Yeah. Um. Yeah. They're like samples from like hip hop tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I sample from hip hop tracks. Yeah. Smacky set snare. Oh, glad you like it. <laughs> Someone asks, how do I make my snares not sound like shit? Well, like, your snares might not sound like shit, but if you just sidechain properly, then you're good. Yeah, um, how did it not make snares sound like shit? I mean, yeah, you layering... Should, you should take that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, layering is obviously a big part of it, because you could have this great transient and, like, have a tail that you don't want, and you take it out, and you can replace it with another tail, or... I think the most, just the most important thing with making snares not sound like shit is having crispy harm um crunchy harmonics but then having round and less distorted fundamentals but this <laughs> distorted fundamentals <laughs> this is another topic let's not let's not get into yeah it. <laughs> for my own dignity generally like having thinking about space as well like with all of your drums you have a layer which is more like stereo or spacious yeah. True. layered on top of something more mono and the m yeah, you don't really want there to be much stereo information in your direct hit. Yeah. And then the tail you can have, like, really stereo and roomy. Someone asked me if I will see an album from you. Um, maybe something experimental, like... I asked this the other day as well. Something from, like, something, like, with a concept, like, where, like, I can just do some weird experimental things for, like, most of the tracks and then have, like, almost, like... There's so many cool things you can do with an album, like placing songs in different places and like just so many creative possibilities. Yeah. I just I just haven't put in, uh, together enough songs that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like if I was gonna do that, I, I'd have to go out into the woods for like a month, or like two months or something, because then you have time to like, and you're and you're there for that purpose of building, of yeah. building material that like is like in that concept area. So yeah, yeah, know. yeah. You have to sort of lock yourself away in some aspect to write an album, whether yeah. it's mentally or physically or. Like, yeah. Me and, me and 13 were talking about doing that, like, in the winter, just go up, because one of my family members has, like, a cottage up north, so we're just going to go up there for, like, a bit and just record sounds and, like, yeah, make a weird, something weird. But, yeah, someone asked, how long have you been producing for, and me, and what happened to Swarty? <laughs> <laughs> I've been producing for, like, seven or eight years, but, like, for the first 
three months I tried producing and then I was so just it was just so complex I just stopped for like six months and then I started again and then I never stopped but it was like in high school when I started for the first few years uh-huh. yeah it was like that I was just kind of on and off and then I got serious after I dropped out of university and I did it full time yeah pretty s- similar you? story with me yeah um, I started when I was 12 which was in 2002 so s- 16 17 years Wait, no, sorry, 2000. Yeah, so 16 years. How old were you? 13. I wasn't 13. Yeah, when you yeah. started, like, producing in what yeah. sense? Yeah, exactly. In what sense were you producing at that time? Um, well, I started in Logic 5. <laughs> like electronic music? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, I, w- I was, like, properly into, like, Daft Punk, Chemical Brothers, and... So um, you've always been in Lemon Jelly day. I was a huge fan of at the time as well. So, yeah, those, like, three, and Moby... <laughs> Moby. Yeah. <laughs> Back I, in I the day. Remember, I mean, I'm talking shit about him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I talk shit about him too, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I started on Logic 5, which was for PC, and moved on to Fruity Loops 4, version 4, yeah. And I left Fru- uh, Fruity Loops version 5 in 2008, go to Ableton, and I haven't left. Thanks for joining yeah. the Brotherhood. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in Ableton since birth. Yeah. <laughs> Certain things are crap in Ableton, like tracking and <laughs> comping <laughs> and autofades <laughs> yeah like just like highlight area and boom yeah they do that though they have autofade it's um that's about, sh- that's about to show me up right here <laughs> <laughs> check it out what is it just command f or something um what was it shift i've got my <laughs> control alt f i've got a little um I've, it's attached to my desk so i can't uh but yeah it's like a reminder of all the different shortcuts and control alt f and then it automatically fades them together. I think that's a new addition. True. <laughs> also, in different aliases for different genres, MRSA is gone. Yes. But the likes of Spore slash Feed Me has been successful. Has it been successful? I mean... Like, Spore has always been, like, kind of big, like, you know what I mean? But the difference between Spore and Feed Me is a lot greater in terms of Sonic, like, landscape than my Matzo stuff in MRSA, so... I, I think I think so. To me, it just all sounds like... Because I listened to Feed Me first, but for some reason, I feel like New Spore sounds like Feed Me making drum and bass rather oh, than yeah? being Spore. Oh, okay. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone That's asks, yeah, when are we going to get a Haywire slash not Zoho Lab? You two t- tour together, right? Yeah, we did. Um, I didn't know that, actually. Yeah, That's for cool. the the first Mad Zoo tour. It was like what? A, it was like a... Ma- we did a, like, a tour to launch label. And hey, why I was on the tour? Yeah. Oh, that's so sick. I had yeah. no idea. I think that was it. I might be remembering that wrong. Yeah, he's sick. We, unfortunately, we didn't, we started making stuff on the tour and we eventually, he showed me Minecraft, so I, and then he, he stopped producing. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we ended up having a server together <laughs> instead. <laughs> <laughs> He's the first person to show me Minecraft, and from then I... Oh, wow, no way. Yeah. That's crazy. And that, from that, that's a I big, ended That's up, a big friendship right there. Yeah. But we've started other stuff since, and it's either I've been too busy, or he's been too busy to finish other, anything we've done. But, hey, it's a live stream, so maybe I can pull up something that we did. I use Splice. Splice is sick, because sometimes there are things that you need to get for your song. And it's mm-hmm. not worth it to make it yourself because no one's going to know the difference. Yeah. So you use Splice. Someone's asking, um, Matt, Motivate is so next double. What is the story behind it and where did you get that vocal? I'm not going to say where I got the vocal because <laughs> that might be incriminating. <laughs> <laughs> but it actually started with me messing around with this plugin called Dext, which is um, a DX7 emulator. And I just had that... Da, 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 and I was, like, messing around with that. And actually, like... A lot of that sound came from just that synth. It like sounded really fat. But it's a DX7 emulator. It's like meant for like that DX7 keyboard road uh, electric um, piano sound. You know. Someone asks, are are you guys good at socializing and networking? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not bad. Actually. I mean, yeah. I think you're better at socializing than me. Wow. Okay, so I can't really play it, <laughs> but I can <coughs> at least look at the patches and stuff. So yeah, this is how it all started, this this synth. Is that bass plant? No. No, this is Dext. True. It's that oh. DX7 emulator. Well, that's sick. I want to try that out then. Yeah. It's it's free as well. Oh, wow. oh that's yeah. crazy. 
if anyone's watching that wants yeah dext is a free plugin and it sounds it's meant to be like a electric piano synth but you can use it for so many like the dx7 is one of the most underrated fm synths i think i need to get an actual hardware unit yeah i've, I've been thinking about that i've got two other fm synths in my I've got a 707 and the TX81Z. Yeah, the 707 wasn't as popular. And the TX81Z was, because that was super cheap, still is. So this kick, <laughs> which you can't even hear because of the fucking buffering. It's just a single kick, which I already had layered and bounced out. And actually you can, I think you can get this one in the sample pack that's coming out soon. Oh yeah, and the clap. So th yeah, it's just, this snare sound which um again i had made previously layered and then bounced out and then layered it with this clap from i think it's just a, a sample pack of claps and layered claps I, I can't really play it so yeah it's just layering that hit with a clap no processing on the snare, but the clap has... I just turned up, up the side gain and turned the mid gain down just to give it more stereo. And then, yeah, here I just put a compressor on the high end. Nowadays I would turn this into just two bands because every uh, crossover point creates a phase problem. Again, hi-hats, which I had layered and bounced out previously. Yeah, and some weird textural stuff. I wish I could play this without it fucking buffering to shit. Yeah, I need to open up this uh, project again anyway, because um, <laughs> BBC have asked me to do a clean version with no swearing. No fucking swearing. <laughs> no fucking swearing. <laughs> but yeah, this is just the little chord thing in the break, in the intro. In the... In fact, let me just... There's ring modulation um, on... If I, you'll have to just play the track off sp on on your computers at home, but because I can't, play. <laughs> that's so annoying. Yeah, in the intro, this is these are the chords that are sort of like crunchy chords in the intro, and then again in the breakdown. Hey, if I leave it soloed, maybe it will just sort itself out. No. Yeah, you like add saturation to get the harmonics, which is for, cool. For the sub bass? Yeah. You add FM? Yeah, I just add a little bit of. Uh, I've done that before too, though. Yeah. yeah. I think your way works better sometimes. Each works in different scenarios. Yeah. And I've got all these different versions of that dext. And then it goes into the drum and bass part. Different versions of the same patch. Yeah, so that's that dex thing with like some kind of triplet filter thing going on. Multipass, probably my favorite plugin ever. You can create all sorts of cool movement. There's two LFOs going on. One, one's a low pass filter and the other's a notch filter. And distor the distortion is going. Any kind of movement is good, so I usually try whatever and see what sounds good. By the way, I've got a sample pack coming out. <laughs> Uh, I think next oh, week. Yeah, it's next week. Oh shit! Yeah, so a lot of these uh, sounds in uh, here come from that sample pack. How much do you focus on loudness during writing mixing stage? Well, actually, I I personally like think about loudness when I'm mixing because, especially for drum and bass, it's important that it's loud. So it should be taken into account. I think you're mixing drum oh, yeah. and bass or bass All music. Right? So I when I'm adding an element, I think about how I can how I can get the most loudness out of it from the get-go like come with the sound instead of writing out the whole track without any ed without any processing and without thinking about mixing and then going to mix it it's like throwing a bunch of jigsaw pieces at a at a like wall and then hope trying to like put them together yeah you can just make the pieces fit from the beginning exactly well. what's my newest coolest technique I've discovered that I'm willing to share. I mean, I, I feel like I've explored digital synthesis and, and uh, processing as much as I can. So the only place I've ever, I've 
moved into recently is like just plugging things into audio gear and just hoping for the best because I'm trying to like stop thinking too hard. <laughs> I think that, yeah, the best technique I've learned recently is literally to not be so like meticulous and like sometimes the best results just come out of throwing caution to the wind and using gear that is a bit broken or a bit crappy and just anything to produce unexpected results. So I've got envelope on the detune and on the high pass filter. Yeah, comb filter. I think the comb filter is probably the most important part of this. Yeah, um, let's call it a day. Thank you. Thanks, Good night. Guys.